how you doing? DeAndre Smith here. And I am excited to show you how to solve equations. Now this lesson is designed to take you from solving those uh, one variable equations all the way up into those multivariable equations. So without further ado, I don't want to waste any time. Let's go to the board. Now before picking up any pencil to solve an equation, we're going to look at solving the equation philosophically to kind of understand what's going on. So I'm going to give you two scenarios in order to help you to visualize what's going on when you're solving an equation. Okay, the first scenario. An equation is like a balance scale. It's like a balance scale because in order for a balance scale to maintain a balance, both sides of the balance scale has to be equal. So in the picture that I've drawn, I have two blocks on this side and two blocks on the other side which is balanced because they have the same weight. But if I remove one block from one side, in order to remain balanced, I'm going to have to move a block from the other side. An equation is also like a mirror because if you can notice in the picture that I have shown, um, a mirror has reflective quantities, meaning that it's going to be one way looking visually, but it's going to be another way as the mirror reflects. Well, this is like an equation because as we move elements back and forth across the equation, uh, we're going to have to perform the opposite operation. So the opposite operations are, well, addition is to subtraction and multiplication is to division. So when we have an equation, the name of the game is that we want to solve for whatever variable that they asked us to solve for in the directions. Now, this means that we want to isolate that variable. So we do this by two ways. We're either going to move factors or we're either going to move terms. Now the addition principle focuses on moving terms and the multiplication principle focuses on moving factors. Remember, terms are those numbers or variables that are separated by addition and subtraction. And factors are those numbers that are separated by multiplication or division. Now let's go to the multiplication principle. Now remember, the multiplication principle allows you to move factors. So factors are separated by multiplication and division. In our first example, we have 2x is equal to 4. Well, 2 is being multiplied to x. So to undo what's being done to x, we're going to divide by 2 to both sides. Once we divide by 2, we get that x is equal to 2. For our second example, now 2 is being divided by x. So to undo the division, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. By multiplying both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 8. In our last example, we have all variables. Uh, but there's no need to fret. Um, this is the same as saying a times x. So to undo the multiplication, again, we're going to perform division. So now we get x is equal to lowercase t over a. Now I'm going to give you some tips as to how to get rid of those parentheses. Sometime in equations, you're going to get problems that's going to have parentheses. So this segment is dedicated to showing you how to get rid of them. <clears throat> so the law that we will be using to get rid of the parentheses is the distributive law. Remember that the distributive law states that if I have some number a times a quantity of b plus c, that is the same thing as saying, well, a times b plus a times c. So let's directly apply that to this example problem. So I have 5 times the quantity of x plus 2 is equal to 20. So the first step that I want to do is to get rid of the parentheses. So I'm going to use the distributive law. So now I end up getting 5x 
plus 10 because 5 times 2 is 10 is equal to 20. Now I want to get rid of everything that's happening to x. So I have a 10, which is a term, being added to x, and I also have a 5, which is being multiplied to x, which is a factor. So to remove the terms, I use the addition principle. So since 10 is being added, I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. Now I'm left with 5x is equal to negative 10. Now I have factors. So I want to use the multiplication principle to get rid of the 5. So since 5 is being multiplied to x, to undo the multiplication, I use division. So now we get x is equal to 2. Another method I want to show you is the clearing fraction method. Now, clearing fractions is important when we have uh, multiple fractions and we want to get rid of them so that we can perform the multiplication or the addition principle. So, clearing the fraction involves finding the common denominator between all of the fractions and multiplying the whole problem by it. Well, in the example that I have behind me, the common denominator would be 8. So I will multiply this whole problem by the number 8. Now this is going to be read as 8 times 1 divided by 4, which is 2. So I'm left with 2x plus 8 times 1, which is 8, divided by 8, which is 1. 8 times 5, which is 40. Now at this point, I look at what's being done to x. Well, I have a term of plus 1 being added to it, and I have a multiple of 2 being multiplied to it. So first, I will remove the terms. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. Now I'm left with 2 times x. So to move factors, we're going to use the multiplication principle. So I'm going to now divide by 2 to both sides. So now my final answer is 39 over 2. Now I'm going to talk about problems that has decimals and utilize this in the clearing decimals method. Now when clearing decimals, we want to multiply by some derivative of 10. Now what I mean by that, when I multiply by 10, I move the decimal place one place to the right. So depending on how many decimal places that I want to move, that's how many times I'm going to multiply by 10. So in the first example, well, I want to move all of my decimal places one place to the right in order to get whole numbers. So I'm going to multiply this whole problem by 10. When I multiply the whole problem by 10, I get 9x plus 2 is equal to 11. Now I can perform my addition and multiplication principle. And I get for my final answer for x to equal 1. In the second example, I want to move my decimal places two places. So I'm going to multiply by 10 twice, or I'm going to multiply by 100. Once I multiply by 100, I get 91x plus 21 
is equal to 111. Now I can apply the addition and multiplication principle. My final answer is 90 over 91. Now in the next couple of clips, we're going to look at some problems where we combine all of the steps that we learned. So in our first problem, we have 3 sevenths A plus 21 is equal to 3 fourteenths. Now, we have all fractions. So the first thing I want to do is to clear all the fractions. So I'm going to multiply the whole problem by the common denominator, which is 14. Once I multiply everything by 14, this problem simplifies into being 6a plus 294 is equal to 3. Now I can apply the addition and multiplication principle. So I'm going to subtract 294 from both sides. So I'm left with 6a is equal to negative 291. Now I'm going to divide by 6 by both sides. I have negative 291 over 6. And this fraction is reducible. So now I'm going to reduce this fraction, and it reduces to negative 97 over 2. Now I'm going to give an example of a problem with majority variables. So in the example behind me, I have 3 times capital T plus lowercase b is equal to 2 times the quantity of lowercase t minus 2 times capital T. And we're going to solve for capital T. So the first step that we're going to do is to get rid of the quantities. So we're going to perform the distributive law so we can get rid of the parentheses. Now that I'm done with the parentheses, now I'm going to combine both of my capital T's by using the addition principle. Now I'm going to use the addition principle again so that I can get all of my capital T's isolated. In my last step, I'm going to use the multiplication principle such that I can get capital T by itself. So my final answer is 2 times lowercase t minus b over 7.
hope you were able to enjoy the lesson on equations. Again, this lesson was to provide um, the basics and fundamentals necessary for solving those problems that ask you to solve for x or to solve for multiple variables. But as always, if you need any additional help, feel free to contact me via email or by phone. Thank you.